Hello guys and welcome back to Jam Chemistry class. So we have chemistry. Alright. And of course in this uh, class we are going to be looking at the electron dot and cross method of writing electronic configuration. Right. So I've stated before now in the previous class. Uh, we have talked about uh, the principle that guides the writing of electronic configuration and then we talked about some of the methods that we are going to be looking at them one after the other so this video talks about the electron dot and cross method very easy so smile and join me but before we begin do not forget that this video tutorial is brought to you by the otl schools jam cbt app it is the best cbt app that you need to succeed in your jam exam it has all the recent past questions that you need for your exam for all subjects in one app right and of course it has a wonderful feature which is called the jam utme challenge the jam the jam utme challenge is a challenge that is being organized by us every week right you participate with all that people writing jam for this year and then you can constantly be able to gauge your preparation for the exam you'll be able to know your weaknesses when you see your results you know your weaknesses you know your strength and you know how to work on your weaknesses do not forget that this channel has videos for all subjects so keep, keep in touch with us and make sure you download that app immediately and start practicing there are so many other features of the app that i don't want to talk about right now because of time but please do not miss this awesome opportunity to have your jam score very 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 legit all right so now uh let's go back to what i'm talking about but before we go back to what we're talking about know that what to activate this app is just 2500 it's a one-time activation fee that you pay once you pay your app remains activated for life provided you do not use your hand to delete the app from your phone or flash your phone all right so let's head back now in the electron dot and cross method what we do is that we draw rings we draw rings to represent shells or orbitals we draw rings to represent shells or what orbitals and then we fill these shells with what with electrons represented drawn as either crosses or dots all right so now what we do in electron dot and cross method is that we draw rings we draw rings like this like this like this and then we fill them up what, with electrons right that are drawn either as what crosses or dots so it could be something like this like this like this like this so now for example let us take uh let us see the electronic configuration for sodium and chlorine using the electron dot and cross method now if we are seeing the electronic configuration for chlorine uh for sodium sodium is na this is 23 mass number 11 electrons then chlorine is what this is uh, uh 17 and then this is what 35 all right now so let's do this if I draw the electronic configuration for this sodium atom, we draw the first shell, which is called the K shell. Then we fill them with what? With two electrons. Sorry. We fill them with two electrons. Then we draw the next shell, right? Filled with eight electrons. Now, you ask yourself, two electrons, two plus eight is what? It's ten. That means there's only one electron left for that of sodium. Then you draw the last shell, the last ring, continue with the last electron. So this is what uh, sodium Na281. The first ring has two electrons. The next ring has eight electrons. But the last ring has what, just one electron. Now for chlorine, the same thing is what we do, right? We draw our two electrons. Then our next eight electrons are in the next sh uh, shell. Then we'll draw the last ring containing how many electrons? Seven electrons. All right. So this your one electron can be here, the two can be here. So it does not matter, provided you represent what the electrons in the rings. All right. So now this is the electronic configuration using the electron dot and cross method for sodium. Why this is the electronic configuration using the electron dot and cross method for chlorine. So this will be chlorine two eight seven. All right, now 
Now that we have this at our disposal, it is very important that I state the fact that structures like this helps us to what to demonstrate what we call chemical bonding. Structures like this help us to demonstrate what chemical bonding, or it helps us to show bond formations between atoms. Bond formation between what? Between atoms. So structures like this, electron dot and cross method, structures like this helps us what in demonstrating chemical bonding and of, of course also showing bond formation between atoms. That is just what you can keep by the side. All right. Now, what is more to know about the electron cross and dot method? What does it help us achieve? Now, the number of rings, the number of rings tells us the period that the element or the atom belongs to, right? The number of rings tells us the period that the, word, that the atom belongs to. Why the number, the number of rings, number of rings tells us the word, the period that word that the atom belongs to why the number of uh sorry the number of what electrons in the atomo shell number of electrons in the atomo shell tells us the group to which the atom belongs to now let's go back again the number of rings tells us the period to which the atom belongs to. Why the number of electrons tells us the group, the number of electrons in the outermost shell rather, tells us the group to which the atom belongs to. So, very important. Now, that means for a sodium atom, right? For a sodium atom having what? Three rings. It has three rings. This means that sodium belongs to what? To period three in the what? In the periodic table. So that means you can find what uh, sodium in period three of the periodic table. Why? Because it has just one valence electron. It has just one electron in the what? In the outermost shell. It means that what? It belongs to what? Uh, it belongs to what? To group one of the periodic table. Group one. One electron in the what? In the outermost shell in the outermost shell so in an exam condition you may be given a, a, a diagram like this and then you'll be told to, 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 to decipher which group the uh, atom belongs to so of course to be what a simple piece of cake for you because you'll be able to fully understand how what we get what the period and the group after we draw the electron dot what the diagram all right so now the rings, the number of rings signify the period, while the number of electrons in the atom shell signify the group that it belongs to. Now, that means for chlorine also, that means it has how many rings there? It has three rings. Three rings. Meaning that what it belongs to what? Period what? Period, period three also of the periodic table. Now, how many, how many electrons are in the atom shell? There are seven electrons. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So seven electrons in the outermost shell means that it belongs to what group seven? Group seven of the periodic table. Now you can see that we are able to uh, decipher what the period and group that these two atoms what belong to after drawing their what electron dot and cross what diagrams. Get all right now. Another thing to note is that. The first shell or the innermost shell can only accommodate two electrons. As you can see here, this first K shell, the first K shell here can only accommodate what two electrons. Why what the next shell can accommodate what eight electrons? So the first shell can accommodate, accommodate two electrons, the next shell can accommodate what eight what electrons. Now, an atom that possesses only the first shell, that is the K shell. An atom, please follow me and understand carefully. An atom that an atom that possesses only the first shell, the innermost shell, the K shell, right, can only accommodate two electrons. Now, if that atom, right, if for example, uh, if if that atom has two electrons, 
right if that atom has two electrons that means that what it is said to have obtained its stable it's called the stable duplex structure now when an atom that has only the first shell the k shell right and contains two electrons in the, in the what in the what in the in the in the innermost shell here, then we say that oh, that, that atom has obtained what a stable duplet structure and the example is helium right helium this is helium right having what uh, mass number four and atomic number two now if you draw the electronic configuration of helium right uh, using the electron dot and cross metal it will have only what it will have only one ring right having two electrons in the atomos shell so helium is what is stable right it, it signifies what stability so we can say that helium has a stable duplet structure you get me all right so now that is that for that now there are some what other cases where what the atomos shell will contain the maximum eight electrons now if the atomos shell contains what the maximum eight electrons let me show you an example for example like like argon like argon which is the 18th element argon is the 18th element so argon possesses what the uh, uh possesses the maximum eight electrons in the atomos shell let's see this is argon zero zero sorry this is zero, zero. <laughs> two electrons then the next one is eight electrons right two eight then the last one is what is eight electrons this is argon argon this is a, a mass um, a mass number 40 approximately and the atomic number 18 right now this is just exact uh, immediately after chlorine all right so now this is argon it has eight electrons in the atomos shell right it has eight electrons in the atomos shell and because of this we can see that what it has obtained the stable octet structure or configuration so an atom that what possesses what eight electrons in the atomos shell like this that contain the maximum eight electrons in the atomos shell is said to what obtain what the stable octet structure right these are the things we are going to be seeing in chemical what bonding all right now note that what all noble gases these are what gases what that belong to what to um uh to group eight of the periodic table right now they are called noble gases they are all what stable they are stable and all reactive example uh is the argon we are just seeing is argon example is neon eh? another example is ragnum right we have xenon right these are all what noble gas even helium helium is part of them right but this one it has stable duplex structure why the other ones have a stable what octet what structure so please keep all these things all these points in mind because they are going to be very useful when we are discussing what chemical bonding all right so now to go over this again we said that what for electron dot and cross method we draw rings to represent what shells or orbitals and then fill them fill them with what with electrons to feed them with electrons drawn as what either crosses or dots before we continue please do not forget to like this video liking the video will make other students like you to find this video easily do not forget to subscribe also subscription is free this we are not paying any money to anybody to subscribe it only means that when we release a new video you'll be among the first person to watch to be notified through your phone that we are publishing a new video do not forget to share this video also to your friends and family now uh, also we saw the electronic configuration of sodium and chlorine right and then we talked about the importance of what having structures like this the importance is that what uh, it helps us what to demonstrate chemical bonding and shows what bond formation between atoms i will say the first what shell the first shell can, can accommodate what uh, the first ring can accommodate what uh, two electrons but the next one can accommodate what eight and so on all right so now this is what the electron dot and cross method now next class we'll be talking about the spdf what method of writing electronic configuration my name remains Olabi Tangor, and i will see you in the next class thank you for watching